that I want to forget. If you're using a book, go ahead and turn to page 528. 528. Also, there's a set of keys that have been found, and I'm looking at the keys, and I see one that belongs to the uh, to the building on here. So, uh, if you've lost a set of keys, and looks like this, just I'm gonna put them here, and nobody will watch you sneak up here and get them later. <laughs> we won't be looking for that. It's good to have everyone here. I had to have a, a few announcements I want to make real quick. One is uh, Buddy Oxley. We want to remember Buddy in our prayers. Um, just uh, Buddy's not doing well. We want to remember him in our prayers. Also, Chris Ray, keep him in our prayers. He's been in and out of the hospital all week with uh, seizures. Uh, keep Wanda Thompson and family in our prayers. The loss of Wanda's brother, Gordon Ray Lockett, Lockhart. Uh, Gordon passed away earlier uh, earlier this week. He'll be having a private memorial. Keep the family in our prayers. Also, we still want to remember Hewlin and Annette Parrott. Uh, Hewlin is transitioning back home uh, this week and uh, as Annette continues to take care of him. I want to remember Jack Shires in our prayers. Uh, remember, he's in ICU, and uh, we just want to remember that family as well in our prayers. Uh, Nancy Wright, want to continue to keep her in our prayers and, and send cards and letters. Regina, Regina Clower had surgery on Tuesday. She is at home recovering now. We want to keep Regina Myrtle and Eric in our prayers. Uh, they're really thankful for all their cards, cards, calls, prayers, and food. So uh, uh, let that continue because that uh, is a blessing to them. Also, I have a, a good announcement. Uh, Jimmy Berry, raise your hand over there, Jimmy, red shirt. Uh, Jimmy was baptized Monday afternoon. So uh, we are very thankful for our new brother in Christ. And uh, so if you have not met uh, Jimmy Berry, make sure that you you get to meet Jerry and uh, get to know him a little bit. Uh, November the 9th is Team Blast Night. November 13th, Golden Circle Lunch. The Kids Snack, November 13th, Standing in the Gap, November 14th. Kids Movie Night is November 18th. And Teens Giving is November 19th. Now, if everybody would read their bulletin all the time and keep them at their house, we wouldn't have to repeat these announcements. Got it? But we're trying to get every, every possible way to make sure we all, and I'm guilty myself. So um, read your bulletin, keep it all week. The ladies retreat January 27th through 29th. Also, November the 22nd, that's a Tuesday night, that's the Tuesday night before Thanksgiving, we'll have our midweek service uh, on that Tuesday night, November 22nd, not the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. So put that on your calendar and remember that. Let's go to our Father in prayer. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful for this opportunity to come before you throne. We're thankful, Father, to know that uh, we can bring our cares and our, our, our praise to you and, and you hear us. We're just thankful, Father, that uh, we, we have this avenue to, to, to talk to you. We pray, Father, that you'll be with us this evening. Help us for the rest of the week. Keep us safe in everything we do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Five hundred and twenty eight. We're going to be singing the first and last verse. <clears throat> I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the
Good evening. If you will turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18, we're going to spend just a few moments here tonight. At the beginning of the chapter, we have the Lord uh, with two of His angels appearing to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre. Uh, Abraham then goes on to show exceptional hospitality. He asks Sarah, his wife, to prepare some bread. and He gets one of the best animals from the flock and gets a young man to prepare that for them to have food. And so Abraham really goes above and beyond to be hospitable to uh, his visitors. And it's at some point during the meal, uh, the Lord starts asking questions of Abraham. And that's where I want to pick up in verse 9, reading in Genesis chapter 18. They said to him, Where is Sarah your wife? And he said, She is in the tent. The Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah your wife shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in years. The way of women had ceased to be with Sarah. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, shall I have pleasure? Uh, in the ancient world, um, women basically, uh, a, lot, a large part of the value that was placed on women was their ability to give their husband children. And so up until this point, obviously Sarah has not been able to do that. And so with that had come obviously some pain and some suffering on her part and Abraham's part to some extent, but particularly Sarah. Um, and so, so much to, she, she really can't grasp the idea of this being able to happen at such an old age. And so much to the point that she laughs to herself. Now we like to harp on Sarah laughing, but we forget Abraham had already laughed at this idea as well. Um, but Sarah nevertheless laughs at what God has said. This time next year I'm going to visit you and you will have a son. So keep reading there in verse 13. It says, The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you about this time next year, and Sarah shall have a son. Now there's a couple of things I want us to notice. God clearly is demonstrating a couple of things here in his conversation with Abraham. Number one, God is showing Abraham and Sarah in particular that he knows the struggle that she has been going through. Two times he mentions that next year I'm going to come to you and you will have a son. In that comment is implied in the fact that he knows what she has been going through. He knows she hasn't been able to do that. And then if you look at the beginning of verse 14, when he says, Is anything too hard for the Lord? He is claiming that he is the one that can take care of this issue. Not only does he know about it, but he cares enough to be the one, and he is able to be the one that is to take care of this problem. But then I want to call your attention to one more idea in the middle of verse 14. That phrase, at the appointed time. In the Hebrew language, that is a fixed time. It's predetermined. It's concrete. Nothing is going to change that. And so what God is telling them is that nothing is going to stop me from fulfilling what I said I'm going to do in a year's time. So not only does God know about Sarah and Abraham's suffering, not only does He care, but He has fixed a time, a point in time, that He is going to end their suffering. Now what about you and me? I think it's safe to say that at time in this life, all of us go through difficult times. All of us have pain and all of us suffer. God has fixed a time, sometime in the future, that He is going to take care of that problem. Paul picks up on this idea in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, starting in verse 5. He says, This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God, 
that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are also suffering. Since indeed God considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you and to grant relief to you who are afflicted as well to us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. When God comes back, when he sends Jesus back, he's going to grant us relief from all the pain and the suffering that we may have endured while living on this earth. And so with that in mind, I hope that encourages all of us during those difficult times to know one day it's going to be taken care of. One day God is going to fix all of the problems that we may have on this earth. And so tonight, if you are struggling, if you're going through a difficult time, if you need prayers for anything at all, or if tonight you would like to obey the gospel uh, and have your sins washed away and be added to the, the Lord's body, we invite you to come forward as we stand and as we sing. Son's name, Christ Jesus. Amen.